you've done a lot of things in your life, haven't you? A few. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about um, life as a kid. What was it? You, you met my mother when you were a kid. You went to Hopkins, did you? No, she met me. Oh, okay. I, I, you should tell him about his father first. Okay, so tell me about your father. My father. Wonderful man. Well, can you tell me any stories? Well, he was a steeplejack by trade. And a steeplejack is somebody that repairs and climbs steeples and travels around the, the country. He worked on the Flatiron Building in New York, as an example, and traveled extensively in his younger years until he fell 110 feet in Waterbury, Connecticut, off a smokestack, and had his leg pierced with a lightning rod and ended up in Yale Hospital in New Haven, Connecticut for a year and a half. And when he got out, went back to work and eventually uh, developed a company that is still going today and has been very successful most of the time. Tell them about the little boy. Who was the little newspaper boy? Who's the little newspaper boy? You got me. I don't know what we're talking about. Your father about. used to take the newspaper boy huh? for lunch. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. My, my father uh, uh, didn't have a formal education, but he was a, a very giving person, and one thing that stands out in my mind was when he used to take us out to dinner downtown New Haven, Connecticut, at a place called the Ashram Brattel, which is long gone, and he used to be a shoe shine boy <coughs> out front with a little box to shine shoes, and <coughs> every time we went there for dinner, He'd always bring the shoe shine boy in for a steak dinner and a, what they called an iron brew back then. And that, I, for some reason, never forgot that. But that was the kind of person that he was. How many brothers and sisters did you have? I had one sister, Mary Ann, and one brother, Harold. My brother Harold's deceased and was five years older than, than I was. Did you guys get along or did you fight like cats and dogs? Well, unfortunately, uh, it was during the Second World War, and my brother went overseas with the Navy Seabees at the age of 17 and came back uh, literally an old man after all the experiences that he had. And uh, he ended up going into the family business and working with my father until he died of cancer. And you got into that business. Yes, I did. I was worked at it since I was 12 years old. I used to uh, <coughs> unload the slate trucks uh, from Vermont for my father, and it would take all day long bending over, uh, picking up the slate and, and stacking it and whatever. And uh, I paid my dues. And then you were the where you went. The head of one of the, not the unions, but the... You were a fire chief, weren't you? No, I was a fire commissioner for the city of New Haven. I was the youngest one ever appointed. I was uh, 26 at the time. Why did they appoint you? Because I'm so capable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very humble, you know. Uh, they appointed me because my father had been a New Haven fire commissioner for a period of 30 years and when he got ill and was unable to, to function, uh, the mayor at that time, which was Richard Lee, uh, brought me in and, and uh, gave me the position, which I held for 14 years. So Jimmy, where did you grow up? I never grew up. Uh, where did I grow up? New Haven, Connecticut. Right around the corner from my mother, right? That's correct. An, an area called Westville, which is part of New Haven, a residential area. And I lived uh, about three blocks from my present wife. How did you get to know my mother? She used to look at my paper in school and copy all my answers. We went to the same schools. We went to the same grammar school, Edgewood Grammar School, which now still exists in New Haven on Edgewood Avenue. And uh, 
we both attended that school and have good memories. And that's how I knew Patsy Sheehan from Edgewood School. You've got quite a few kids. Yeah. <laughs> You've been yeah. busy. Yeah, busy. Busy. <laughs> Tell me about your children. Well. The first one was who? And my first wife, who is now deceased, I had uh, three children, uh, Jamie Dayhill and Jeffrey Dayhill and Kristen Dayhill, my daughter, when I was in California, in Los Angeles. What do you think of those kids? They're good people. I raised them well. And then I remarried uh, a woman that had five children and took on that responsibility and her and I uh, had two additional children, two boys, one uh, Brendan Dayhill and the other boy Brian Dayhill. And Brendan presently was out in Ohio and uh, Brian is married with three children and lives out in uh, Reno, Nevada. And you traveled a lot in your life, huh? Fair amount. Somebody said you went to Cuba? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about Cuba. <laughs> well, I got to Cuba through uh, the University of Miami, which is in Coral Gables. And we used to I had a Cuban roommate, and we used to drive from Coral Gables on the Key West and take Q Airlines uh, off the beach, a private uh, plane, and uh, fly it over to Cuba, which is about 30 minutes away. And uh, because I had a Cuban roommate, uh, I had many invitations to go to Cuba. And I spent a lot of time there before uh, Batista was uh, knocked off as the uh, uh, dictator, if you will, of Cuba. And Castro took What'd over. What did you think of it over there? It was interesting. Nice people. I enjoyed it and uh, always look forward to my visits there. So, Jamie, uh, Jimmy, I think you're very similar to your sons. You're quite the ladies' man. You guys have wandering eyes. What's that all about? <laughs> it sounds like I'm being set up for something. I don't know what. <laughs> well, I have a wandering eye, and that's how I found my present wife, Patsy, because I spotted her in Edward School and never let go. You were actually at my parents' wedding, weren't you? That's correct. Uh, Raceburg Country Club, we had the reception. And it was a lovely wedding. <laughs> Jimmy, what do, you, do you miss Florida? Do you miss your place in Florida? Yes. Yeah. It's the time. What was your favorite thing about down there? You used to love to sit and look out that window. Well, just the environment, the Atlantic Ocean, uh, right outside your window. And we met some nice people that we're still friendly with. And it was a wonderful time for 10 years. Now it's time to move on. Right. So it's Christmas Eve. Have you been a good boy or a bad boy? I'm outstandingly good. <laughs> what else do you want to talk about? Um, what about your grandkids? Well... Out of all the children I'd had, I only ended up with three grandchildren, uh, three boys that live out in Reno. And uh, they're nice young men, and hopefully they'll do well. What do you think about your step uh, girls? Your step like me and Debbie. <laughs> and my husband, John. Well, John's okay. <laughs> and Debbie. And and Pammy, it depends what day. But uh, no, they're good uh, people and I enjoy the association and the relationship. And you're very into sports. What is all about that? What's your favorite sport to watch on TV? My special what? You're, you love to watch sports. Yeah, I enjoy college uh, athletics. Uh, I enjoy uh, college baseball and college football. Favorite teams? Well, basketball. college and basketball. Who do you like? UConn? The University of Miami comes up first. 
and uh, UConn State uh, College here in Connecticut, and uh, Boston College where my son Jamie graduated from. Uh, I, I follow their schedule, and my son was a swimmer up there on the varsity at Boston College. And that was, that used to be fun. You didn't tell me anything about your mother. What about your mother? My mother was a sweet woman and a good, loving, caring mother, and I was very fortunate so to have her. Were you a good student in college? Depends what subject you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was good enough where, where they kept me and I graduated, so I hope that answers your question. What else? I had a lot of outside uh, experiences down at Coral Gables. It was another world for me at that time of my life. And what do you think about Castle Rock? You really like living here, don't you? Yes, I enjoy it very much. What What's so cool about this? Well, it's well maintained, number one. And uh, it's well landscaped. And there are nice people that live here. What do you think about my mother? I love your mother. It's as simple as that. Uh, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here. I say that because of some of the physical <coughs> conditions I've experienced that uh, uh, she helped take care of, like making me go to the hospital when I refused to go. And if I hadn't gone, I wouldn't be sitting here today. Uh, mm -hmm. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else think of anything else? Well, I think you did great. Yeah. Anything else you'd like to say? It's fun to be a celebrity. It's tough to be a celebrity. <laughs> uh, it's fun to be a celebrity. Yeah. We, what were the com you were on the committees. Uh, uh, in in Rome. Did you play? Did you sp play sports in high school? Yes, I went to Hopkins Grammar School. In were you West good school. at anything? No, <laughs> but good enough where they kept me, uh, just in case. <laughs> Well, what uh, about those committees that you were on? You were head of this committee. And I was the uh, president of the uh, Northeast Roofing Contractors, which uh, geographically took up... Uh, you look like you're crying. No, which took up as the lights in my eye. Uh, <laughs> it's hard to be pretty, uh, right? Right. I'm not used to being a celebrity or feeling like one. But getting back to my associations, uh, I was president of that association for New England, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, and uh, ended up being vice president of the National Roofing Foundation in Chicago, Illinois, with a membership of uh, over 2,500 contractors. If you had to say, what kind of, what does, what is Kristen most like, like you? What does she do? gotten from you? Is it your stubbornness, your jovial sense of humor, your looks? What is it? What does she, Kristen have? Kristen, she got guts. She's a very gutsy gal. And I give her a lot of credit. She went out to California by herself with $100 in her pocket and did very well for herself in her career as a personal assistant. And what about Jamie? What's, what, 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 what reminds you of yourself in Jamie? Well, he's, like a, he's a little bit of a social butterfly, and I was pretty good at that at his age. And uh, he's in the pharmaceutical business in Manhattan, New York. And uh, he's a good man. What about Jeffrey? Jeffrey is another story. <laughs> yeah. Jeffrey. Uh, Pepper Dayhill. Uh, Jeffrey went to Syracuse uh, uh, University and eventually graduated from Quinnipiac in Hamden, Connecticut. And uh, uh, traveled around quite a bit, around the world that is. And uh, he enjoys traveling and, and I do too, so we have that in common. How about Brendan? Brendan? Brendan. He's a he's a, a soft soul. Yeah, he's uh, yes, that's a good way of putting it. He's a soft soul. He's uh, a caregiver type, 
and uh, I hopefully he'll find himself. And right now he's wandering a little bit, but he's a good boy.